Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Biz Talk Africa. Really excited today. We have a really cool guest. Uh, welcome, Graham Gilmore. Uh, Graham is doing some really cool things. I'll, I'll let him explain uh, you know, what it is that he does. Uh, I'm your host, Jason Schuster, representing BizTech, and my wonderful co-host, Vidya Mike. Vidi, glad to have you back. It looks like you're back in England, not on the road anymore, right? Still on the road. You're still on the road. Oh, my goodness. Here I am thinking you're finally back home, but you're not. You're still not on the yet. road. Okay. I will That's be our- soon. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be visiting Graham. <laughs> I hope so. Ah, there you I'll, go. Although I should say, uh, I'm in the middle of Johannesburg. And it's absolutely freezing. This is, uh, I think today's been the coldest day uh, South Africa's ever had. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> amazing, amazing. Well, Graham, uh, let's get started. Sure. Tell us about yourself. Well, uh, my, my background came from uh, being in the payments industry and uh, been all over the world, really. Started off in business as an entrepreneur back in Australia many, many years ago. Ended up in Vidi's part of the world, in the Caribbean, after doing a couple of trade sales. And I was, uh, I think it was 2004, 2005, I was based in Bahrain, in the, in the Gulf, and got a very strange phone call from a lady in Nairobi, in Kenya, who said, uh, I've been reading about some of your products and services. I think it's time you came to Kenya, because there's a huge demand for that. So, having... My, my team had never been to Africa. I'd never been to Africa. So we sent over a, a business development guy for three or four days just to see if there was any business there. And he, you could tell by the look on his face, he was less than enthusiastic. You know, mm-hmm. Our life in Bahrain was very simple, quite fun. And he, he came back and he said, uh, complete waste of time, waste of your money. There's no business in Africa. So I said, okay, we'll make sure you follow up. Send, send these people some samples and you know, do, just do your best and we'll forget all about it. So this woman phones me up about three weeks later and she says, uh, what sort of company are you running, Mr. Gilmore? I says, well, what do you mean? You know, quite taken aback. She goes, well, your chap came over here, spent a couple of days unenthusiastically at meetings with me. He hasn't sent me any information. He hasn't sent me any samples. And, uh, you know, no, nothing's happened. I said, well, to be very honest, ma'am, I says, he's, he told me there was no business for us in Africa. And she, this woman, you could, you could almost feel she was, her blood was boiling. And she goes, well, you didn't sound to me like the sort of person who hired idiots. And I thought, wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I said, well, <laughs> I was so you taken Tell me how you really feel. <laughs> 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 so, lo, lo and behold, it was uh, Ramadan was coming up. And I thought, well, you know what? I, I need a holiday, and I've never been to Africa. And uh, I said, I said, I'll, I'll come and see you. I said, I'll, well, let's do a couple of days and meetings, and you, you show me why you think we should be here. And my goodness, from the minute I got off the plane, it was chaos compared to business in, in, in the Gulf, business in the UK. From the minute I checked into my hotel, all I saw was business opportunities. Every single meeting I went to, it was, wow. uh, you know, people were saying to me, my goodness, you can do this, you can do this. It was in the payment space. And I, I didn't go on safari. I spent a whole week traipsing the streets in Nairobi. And my, I thought, you know what? Africa is a huge opportunity. Kenya's this is this is just fantastic. The people were friendly. It was quite it seemed on on the surface very easy to do business, and uh, met met some of which some of my biggest clients ever. And within three months, I'd moved my whole business from the Middle East to Nairobi. Three months wow. after that, three months after that, I had seventy six staff. So we grew from like about five guys and a dog to 76 and uh, we, we became one of the, the, the most successful payment processors that no one ever hears of in the background and that that company ultimately 
got bought out. But what it did do was it allowed me to, obviously Kenya was my base in those days, it allowed me to go into Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi. I came down to South Africa. We had offices in Ghana, in Sierra Leone, in Nigeria, and just sort of fell in love with the with the continent of Africa and the people that uh, the people that are here. And it was it was probably the best the best thing that I'd ever done. So anyone that's hesitant about coming into the African market, I would say, you know. Don't, don't worry about what it says in the news and the news groups and everything. It's incredibly safe, incredibly profitable if you get it right. And the people are fantastic. And it's, uh, you know, you're surrounded daily by entrepreneurs. People come up to me and give me their CVs. There's a huge energy uh, that exists within the, 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 the young population that's here. And you look at countries like Nigeria, 200 million plus people, you know. It's a, it's a massive, massive market. It's not easy. It's not for the faint-hearted. But boy, it was the best thing I ever did. You know, I've, I've been here since 2005. <laughs> and, wow. and, and, I've rare, and I've rarely left. Yeah. Wow. Sounds like a waste of time. No business opportunities. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but isn't this the most amazing testimonial um, we've ever had, Jason? I, I would say that it's, it's certainly one of the best. Yeah. It's just, it, it's, it's amazing. You know, <laughs> I think there's a lot of people who, who feel outside looking in that there might not be there very many business opportunities in Africa, but I think it's just their, their, their perception. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's just, and it's just a warped perception. So I would imagine that this whole process also uh, had you take another look at your hiring practices too, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, like this is what Biz Talk does, right? Uh, talking to people like you, Graham, and, and other yeah. entrepreneurs, we get the inside track of what's really happening. Because mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you look at the news, as you said, you look at the news, you read the news, you just, you know, people, people show you a view to sort of cause confusion or I, I don't know what the agenda is. But mm -hmm. when we on Biz Talk, we've had nothing but positive energy. Yeah. And this is why Bistock Africa is such an important program because we sort of showcasing people like yourself and opportunities and how easy it is to do business and mm. why that continent, you know, is, is like the place to actually sort of focus and, yeah. and, and try and work with. So, so Graham, what is your current business? So you did payments and what are you doing yeah. now? Well, <clears throat> I ended up in, uh, when I exited my last company, I, uh, I ended up in Ghana, Ghana being probably one of, one of the easier places to speak. It's English speaking. I'd already been there and it, ha it has very, very good air links into other African countries. And uh, I was an ISP, Internet Service Provider. And I have to say it was probably the most boring business I'd ever done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had this vision of... Uh, what was, what's the term that's most commonly used now? Bridging the digital divide. And uh, it was just, a, it, was, it, was ju it just wasn't very exciting. It wasn't a business you could really scale up. You know? And I, I like to build things from the bottom they say, and grow very, very quickly. And it was a, it was a Thursday night and I had, a, I had a, a driver and he was supposed to pick me up at five o'clock to go to a meeting in, in downtown Accra. And he phoned me up and goes, boss, no way I'm going to get there. He says, uh, I'm stuck in traffic and the rain's coming. Now in, in Accra, people don't particularly like driving in the rain because there's been some terrible accidents. And a lot of people killed during a flood many, many years ago, mm. which meant I, I automatically couldn't get uh, an Uber or a taxi fire, as they were called in those days. So I thought the only way, the only way I can get to this meeting in time is I'm going to have to use local transport. And in, in Ghana, these things are called trotros. And they're, they're, they're rickety old buses or vans that carry like between 15 and 20 people. And you don't see many white guys in pinstripe suits and briefcases getting into them. So, <laughs> so I, 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 hail, I hail this, this trotro down. I get in and it's shocking awe. Everybody's like, what's this guy doing in here? <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, 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 I'm sitting and I, I pull out my, I had a Blackberry in those days. So I, I pull out my Blackberry Priv 
and I start working away and doing my WhatsApps and my emails and what have you. And this very, very young, well-dressed guy sitting next to me sort of staring at me quite intently. And I said, is, is there a problem with people using their phones? Expecting him to say, yeah, well, I'd put it in your pocket. Someone might nick it, you know? And, and he goes, oh, no, no, no. He says, uh, there's no problem. I says, well, don't you use your phone when you're commuting in and out? And he goes, no. And I said, well, well, tell me why. And he says, well, it's the cost of data. It's so expensive. And I'm thinking, well, that's the business I'm in. I sell data. You know, I'm, I'm trying to sell, you know, terabytes of data into government, into hospitals, insurance companies. It's what I do. However, the point that I, I had missed was that I would buy $100 worth of data. And when it ran out, I'd buy another $100. This guy is buying like two dollars, three dollars. You know, is that they're not they're not middle they're not middle income people. They're they're at the sort of bottom end of the pyramid. And I said to him, okay. And I had one of those sort of light bulb moments. And I thought, if I if I could give you free access, so that you didn't have to pay for your data while you were commuting in and out of work, you'd use it. He goes, everybody in this trotro would. And I, I started to get that, that feeling that I was going to build something big again. So, so the bus, the Trotto finally gets to the, the part of town that, I'm, that I want to get out of. And I said to everybody, well, thank you very much. It's been a very nice trip, enjoyable experience. But I want to ask you, how many people on this vehicle have got a smartphone? It's nearly all of them. I think there was about three people out of about 22 didn't have a smartphone. And the smartphones I had were better than the smartphone I had. I had this, you know, old BlackBerry Prib that was falling apart. And I said, if I could give you free Wi-Fi access while you were commuting, would you use it? And, and everyone went, yep, yep, I would, I would. I'd use it all day long. And then the following morning, I thought, I just had a look at my own office. And we, we probably had about 15 people working in there. And everybody's on their phone as we are. Yeah, but why are they on their phones? Because they're using the office Wi-Fi. So they've got the, the best smartphones, but they're not using them for, you know, really productive things. Everybody's on Facebook and WhatsApp and Snapchat. So I phoned up a, a, fr a friend of mine, an acquaintance, and I said, if I could take all your social media and your messaging and stick it onto someone's phone while they were coming in and out of work, would you pay for it? And the guy said, that's a great idea. Come around, let's talk about it. And then I phoned another friend of mine who was in the uh, sports betting industry. And they spend a fortune on billboards on the highways. And I, I said to him, Clive, if I could take those messages on your billboards, but stick them in people's phones when they were traveling, would you pay for it? And he goes, all day long. So that's where, that's where my company, MCT, started. I mean, it's not been easy. You know, we went through about four or five different types of units, a couple of different partnerships to get the software working. But it, the end result now is that people here in South Africa, other parts of Africa where we operate, get into the transport, mode of transport, which are, we call them trotros, taxis, matatus. As they're going to work, they've got free access. I show them a couple of ads that are paid for by the advertisers. And every 20 minutes, they've got a, 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 a login that shows them another couple of ads, and away they go. And it, it was only really uh, about six to eight weeks ago, I was, in, uh, I was in Pretoria, which is one of the one of the towns in Johannesburg, just outside Johannesburg here. And the, the taxi driver says to me, you know what, Graham? He says, uh, every night when the schools come out, my taxi is surrounded by children. And I went, yeah, and your point is? He says, well, they're all using the free Wi-Fi. So kids were doing homework oh. and do projects and research, stand, not in the taxi, standing outside, because these things create a large hotspot. Huh? And I thought, you know what? Finally, I've come up with a solution to, to bridge the digital divide. Because you, you can put hotspots and, you know, the big guys, the Facebooks and the Googles and that, they all talk about, yeah, we're going to do this and we're going to do that and financial inclusion and, and more access for more people and people at the bottom end of the pyramid. But actually, nobody ever really gets round to it. 
Why? Right. Because because the guy in the village, if he's got like two dollars, he's either going to spend that on food, or education, or health. He doesn't have the money to go and buy uh, a, a month's Wi-Fi package for his for his wife and his kids or for himself. Yeah. The, 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 those guys at the end, the end of that last mile, they don't have the income. So our, our, our take is, well, okay, fair enough. Let's let the people that do have the, uh, the the wherewithal, you know, the big advertising companies and what have you, let's let them pay and let's give the, you know, the village, the guy at the end of the last mile, let's give them free access. So that's what we're doing now. Gives me goosebumps because, you know, like, it's genius. It's one of those solutions that stare everybody in the face, but actually connecting it. And I yeah. love your market research, you know, just come on the bus. So if you had free Wi-Fi, would you, that's, it's brilliant. Yeah, and, it's uh, back to basics, isn't it? You know? Yeah. Wow. So e every day, thousands of people in, uh, in Johannesburg and in Rustenburg here, they log in. So as a, as a business guy, my, my target is to get 28 million people connected in Africa every single day. That's, nice. that's our goal, you know? And you know wow. what? It's highly achievable, right? Because very, so, very. so where, where are you now? Where are your locations? What's, what's your next plans? Okay. Well, we're, we're poised uh, to, to go into Nigeria. I, ha I have partners and, uh, and products set up ready to go in Lagos in Port Harcourt and in Benin City. Now, the, you know, we've, we've not really been affected too much by COVID, to be very honest. Uh, in fact, you know, we're, we're, I, I speak to other business friends that have you know, lost their businesses uh, due to the, some restrictions and the, the rules for traveling and everything. We've been quite lucky. We've managed to sort of circumnavigate our way around that. But at the moment, we can't really get into get our teams in, in on the ground in Lagos. We're, we're, we're live in Ghana and we're expanding in Ghana. You know, I mean, we, that's, that's where we started. And uh, we, we, we ended up down here in South Africa in <clears throat> late October last year. And we, we got our first units live at the end of February here. So every day we're signing up people. We've, I think we've got about 35, 40,000 registered users in South Africa. And, you know, these, these people get on one bus. Because every, everybody's commuting from townships and what have you into the cities or the industrial zones. So people are traveling for maybe two or three hours each way just to get wow. to work. Wow. Wow. So we and see how those has people. It been? I mean, it's been fantastic. I Absolutely. Fun. That's that's really good. And and I just wanted to say, um, <clears throat> you know, pay my respects and I'm really sorry to hear about the riots that South Africa has recently had. Mm. Um, you know, but but the thing is the community service, the work that you're doing, the work that others are doing to help yeah. South Africa back. Yeah. That's that's epic. That is what needs to happen. Yeah. Well, we we actually had some of our uh, record days during those troubled days. Because people were heading down to the taxis to get onto their WhatsApps and find out if their families were okay, sending emails. It was, you know, if, if, it, it was terrible. But I, I, yet again, our, our mobile hotspots turned into being assets because if you know, if the if the taxis turned his power on, that, that that's a that's a mobile hotspot. And truth be known, about 150 people could log in concurrently at the same time. And send their WhatsApps and snapshots and their photographs and all that good stuff, you know. So even even you during know, that, we were providing a service. You know? That is amazing. And and whilst we don't normally do this, um, mm -hmm. I propose one of our sessions. We'll do it from from a bus, and hopefully, right. we have all people behind you logged yeah. on, so we get to see this working. Right. Um, well, we're, so we're we're doing a big deployment. Uh, at the end of this month, beginning of the next month, in, in a, a very famous place everybody will have heard of is Soweto. And I've got a, a taxi association there. We've got over 10,000 vehicles that they want us to roll out on. Wow. That's a big number, you know? So for our audience, mm. I mean, how could we help? What could we do to help MCT have a bigger launch? Right. 
Well, a a any PR is always helpful. We're, uh, <laughs> we're spread the word. We're, we're, cons we're like, like most uh, entrepreneurs, we're always looking for that extra dollar of investment because you know it, it does it's expensive to kit out a vehicle. Uh, it's not expensive to run it, but the, the actual hardware that we put in is like military proof uh, modems. It's not, it's not something right. that you go and buy off the shelf. And right. the, the, the software and hardware that goes into that, you know, it's, 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 it's not cheap. So, okay, okay. So, yep. for, I mean, if you guys like this, like what you're hearing, contact us at um, BizTalk. We have a matchmaking facility. So through us, you could sort of participate in, you know, this really exciting project. Yeah. I mean, every, every vehicle that we put out there reaches, you know, literally thousands of new people that can connect to the Wi-Fi. Absolutely. It, it, it's strange. The last time, last time I was up in Ghana, there was a chap said to me, oh, he said, I can't see that business model working. And I said, well, why not? He goes, nobody's got smartphones. And we, we were in a... We, we, <laughs> We we were we were in a we were in a five star hotel, right? uh, sitting talking, do, doing a, trying to do a little bit of business, and I says you're very very wrong. He goes Graham, you're mad. He goes these people here, right? almost derogatory. These people here, they don't have smartphones. They all do. And I, I, so I, I called I called the waiter over that was looking after us, and I said to him, how many phones do you have? And he goes three. I says well. What, what sort of phones are they? He goes, well, he goes, I've got a feature phone. That's the, the old Nokia types. And he goes, I use that for calling my mum and dad. He says, and I've got two smartphones. I've got a Techno and a Samsung. <laughs> you know? And I'm sitting there with an old beat-up Blackberry. And that is, that is so typical, you know? Well, he, he, someone like that, he's just not going to make the cut for your hiring, your new hiring policies. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But also, I think like, um, you, you know, people who want to be able to reach people within Africa certainly yeah. could contact Graham and his team to do advertising on buses or if you want to put programs or whatever. I mean, this is a great way to reach people. Yeah. yeah. You have undivided attention, right? So Absolutely. You know, you're traveling. It's amazing to be able to, you know, connect, do something on your phone. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah. Everybody is on social media at every opportunity here. Uh, you know, it's, right. it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. When it, okay. And, and it, it, so it, it, it hits you hard when you, when you see a whole load of young teenagers standing outside a fire station in the middle of a township because the only place they can get Wi Fi access is by hacking into the local fire station systems. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Know? They and and the, and these are smart people, huh? These are smart kids. This is tremendous because you're helping the next generation get connected. Yeah, and I I'm, think like exactly what you wanted to do, right? Connect people. You've done that. You've achieved yeah. that. And it's yeah. it's it's tremendous. It's very exciting. Oh, it's, now, Graham, let me throw let me throw something else at you here. Sure. And this is uh, kind of an oddball question, but since you've done this and you've been having a lot of success, I have have you, has anyone tried to mimic your business? Any new competitors? Ooh, anybody else question. picking up on this trend? Uh, yes and yes. Uh, <laughs> the, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm, not the, I'm not the first guy to do something like this or try something like this. And I've, I've, I've actually I've spent a quite a bit of time with uh, people who had failed. And fail, the, the, the reason that they failed was not number one, as, as we go back in time. It was the equipment wasn't robust enough. Yeah, mm. that, that was sure. number one. Number two, they, they restricted or tried to restrict what people could access when they were getting their free Wi-Fi. Number wow. three, they aligned themselves with one operator as opposed to all the operators. <clears throat> ah, yes. Yeah. Uh, number four, the business model was just back to front, you know? I mean, I, I, as, a, as an entrepreneur, I, I used to coach a, a load of young guys in Nairobi on a Saturday. And I used to say to them, you know, first mover advantage these days is the kiss of death, you know? Yes. If, 
don't be afraid to re-engineer a good idea. Yes. Yeah. You know? uh, so yeah, and and people, the the people have tried to mimic me, and the and they failed. Uh, I had a chap do it, tried to do it here. I had a chap in Ghana, and probably that's because we run a pretty holistic business. We treat the uh, we treat the the guy who hails the taxis, or the drivers, or the owners, or the taxi associations, and all the people that you deal with, exactly the same. We, you know, there's no disrespect between different categories. Nice. The, the guy who's the bus driver is more important to me than the guy that runs the taxi association, but never the two would meet. So we, we treat everybody well, we pay everybody well, and if they've got problems, you know, we try and try and solve it for them. So. I don't, I don't know if that's a modern day, we're a green company. I don't know if that's the, the, the term, but yeah, we, we, we try and look after everybody that's in the food chain. That's like amazing. That. Mm. And you know, you're creating jobs, you're, yeah. you know, helping young people, you're helping people, you know, in need, you know, yeah. being connected. If I, if my phone doesn't have connection, you know, I'm like walking around like, oh my God, what do I do next? And yeah. it's that important. I, yeah. I can't even remember phone numbers and stuff like that. I mean, I'm so reliant on my phone. Yeah. So, I don't um, even know my own phone number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This has been amazing. Mm. Oh, thanks. Absolutely. I, I would encourage anybody that wants to, you know, step out of the mold. I, I, Africa, Africa's got it for you, you know. It's challenging. Beautiful. You know, but if, you, if you're risk averse, and and you've got a good idea. This is the place to come. You know, yeah. whether it's whether it's the jungles of Sierra Leone where where I, I lived and worked for a while, or in the middle of South Africa, which is like New York. It's it's all good. I love it. I love it, Graham. Any any other final words before we before we go to? And again, we'd love to have another session with you. Yeah. And like Vidi said, maybe we do it from uh, from one of these buses, just so people can see it. It'd be That'd be pretty yep. cool. Yep. That'd be just pretty a, cool. <clears throat> just give me a little bit of notice. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. These, appreciate... these days I don't run around in the taxis like I used to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. We'll give yeah, yeah we'll give you some yeah. notice. I appreciate you coming on here short notice today. Yeah, so, yeah. Awesome. And if, if 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 any of your uh, any of your viewers or budding entrepreneurs want to have a chat or a bit of advice or a bit of guidance, I'm because I'm getting old now. You see, I've done a few things. I'm, I'm more than happy, more than happy to help them. That's fantastic. In fact, I would say most of our audience is young entrepreneurs and a lot of young entrepreneurs in Africa. Right. Um, so I, I think that that's a great offer and yeah. that's another big way that you're giving back. Um, mm. All, all young entrepreneurs need mentors and they need to learn Absolutely. from the last generation yeah. of entrepreneurs. Yeah. And, yeah. and we at BizTalk are planning an event <clears throat> where we will have, you know, people showcasing and stuff like that. So Graham, we would certainly love to have you on that as well. Yep. Love to help. Love to assist. Absolutely. Right. Awesome. Graham, thanks for being right. here. Really appreciate it. Love to this. Love learning about what you're doing. And uh, yeah, let's do it again. Look forward to it. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Until next bye -bye. time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.